So I think, uh, are we ready for closing arguments? We are, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. So let me call the case as soon as we're on the record. CR 01204-8236, State of Idaho versus Robert James Royal Jones. Let's go ahead and have the jury come in. We do have our instructions prepared. Okay, thank you. Please be seated. And now I'm going to uh, read our remaining jury instructions, and you'll get a copy of these as well. You have now heard all the evidence in the case. My duty is to instruct you as to the law. You must follow all the rules as I explain them to you. You may not follow some and ignore others. Even if you disagree or don't understand the reasons for some of the rules, you are bound to follow them. If anyone states a rule of law different from any I tell you, it is my instruction that you must follow. As members of the jury, it is your duty to decide what the facts are and to apply those facts to the law that I have given you. You are to decide the facts from all of the evidence presented in the case. The evidence you are to consider consists of sworn testimony of witnesses, exhibits which have been admitted into evidence, and any facts which the parties have stipulated to. Certain things you have heard or seen are not evidence, including arguments and statements by lawyers or the lawyers and uh, the party. The lawyers and the party, uh, for the most part, until such time as the uh, party took the witness stand, are not witnesses. What you say, uh, what they say in their opening statements, closing arguments, and at other times is included to help you interpret the evidence, but is not evidence. If the facts as you remember them differ from the way the lawyers have stated them, follow your memory. Testimony that has been excluded or stricken or which you have been instructed uh, to disregard anything that you may have seen or heard when the court was not in session. It is alleged that the crime charge was committed on or about a certain date. If you find the crime was committed, the proof need not show it was committed on that precise date. It need only show that the crime was committed on or after uh, statute of limitation bar date. In order for the defendant to be guilty of disturbing the peace, the state must prove each of the following. On or about December 8th of 2020, in the state of Idaho, the defendant, Robert James Royal Jones, maliciously and willfully disturbed the peace or quiet of a neighborhood, to wit, Amy Costello, Susan Curtis, Peter O'Connell, O'Connell and or Patricia Lasciando by loud or unusual noise and or tumultuous or offensive conduct by blowing air horns, honking car horns, and screaming. If any of the above has not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, you must find the defendant not guilty. If each of the above has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find the defendant guilty. An act is willful or done willfully when done on purpose. One can act willfully without intending to violate the law, to injure another, or to acquire any advantage. Malice and maliciously mean the desire to annoy or injure another or the intent to do a wrongful act. In videos admitted into evidence, you have heard statements made by people other than the defendant. You are not to consider those statements when determining whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty. During the trial, you have heard eruptions from the gallery. You are instructed not to consider those eruptions. I have outlined for you the rules of law applicable to this case and have told you of some of the matters which you may consider in weighing the evidence to determine the facts. In a few minutes, the counsel and uh, the defendant will present their closing remarks to you, and then you will retire to the jury room for your deliberations. The arguments and statements of the attorneys and the defendant are not evidence. If you remember the facts differently from the way the attorneys have stated them, you should base your decisions on what you remember. The attitude and conduct of jurors at the beginning of your deliberations are important. It is rarely productive at the outset for you to make an emphatic expression of your opinion on the case or to state how you intend to vote. When you do that at the beginning, your sense of pride may be aroused and you may hesitate to change your position even if shown that it is wrong. Remember that you are not partisans or advocates, but are judges. For me, 
uh, and for you there can be no triumph except in the ascertainment and declaration of the truth. As jurors, you have a duty to consult with one another and to deliberate before making your individual decisions. You may fully and fairly discuss among yourselves all of the evidence you have seen and heard in this courtroom about this case together with the law that relates to this case as contained in these instructions. During your deliberations, you each have a right to re-examine your own views and change your opinion. You should only do so if you are convinced by fair and honest discussion that your original opinion was incorrect based upon the evidence the jury saw and heard during the trial and the law as given you in these instructions. Consult with one another. Consider each other's views and deliberate with the objective of reaching an agreement, if you can do so without disturbing your individual judgment. Each of you must decide this case for yourself, but you should do so only after a discussion and consideration of the case with your fellow jurors. However, none of you should surrender your honest opinion as to the weight or effect of evidence or as to the innocence or guilt of the defendant because the majority of the jury feels otherwise or for the purpose of returning a unanimous verdict. The original instructions and the exhibits will be with you in the jury room. They are part of the official court record. For this reason, please do not alter them or write or mark on them in any way. If you have any questions about the handling or use of the exhibits, submit those questions in writing to me through the bailiff. The instructions are numbered for convenience in referring to specific instructions. There may or may not be a gap in the numbering of the instructions. If there is, you should not concern yourself about such gap. Upon retiring to the jury room, select one of you as a presiding officer who will preside over your deliberations. It is that person's duty to see that discussion is orderly, that the issues submitted for your decision are fully and fairly discussed, and that every juror has a chance to express himself or herself upon each question. In this case, your verdict must be unanimous. When you all arrive at a verdict, the presiding officer will sign it, and you will return it into open court. Your verdict in this case cannot be arrived at by chance, by lot, or by compromise. If, after considering, considering all of the instructions in their entirety, and after having fully discussed the evidence before you, the jury determines that it is necessary to communicate with me, you may send a note by the bailiff. You are not to reveal to me or anyone else how the jury stands until you have reached a verdict or unless you are instructed by me to do so. A verdict form suitable to any conclusion that you may reach will be submitted to you with these instructions. Okay. <clears throat>